Welcome my students to notes 8.1 functions. We will be talking about functions, what are their roles, and find out the relationship of how to calculate when you are given a certain input and how to calculate the output. And you will also be creating a function table along with graphing. Now, before we actually do that, there are some terms that you do need to understand. Go ahead and get your interactive notebook and write the vocabulary terms along with their definition. You remember, you could always hit pause anytime you feel like it, or rewind or fast forward in case you are rewatching the video. Now, for our first vocabulary term, we actually have a function. What is a function? And that is a relation that assigns exactly one output value to another input value. The next one is our function rule. Function rule, think about this as the formula, the information that is given to you, and then you get to substitute one of the variables in order to find out what the other variable is. In other words, that describes the relationship between each input and output. The third term is function tables. And that, you can look at it right here, that's creating a table and it's a way to organize the input and output values and the function rule. So right here, as you could see, you have the function rule. This one is given to you, it changes. It's not always gonna be this. But then, in order to find out what Y is, you are going to organize that information with the function tables. Now, function tables may look different. It could be either horizontally or vertically, depending on what they give you. Now, we have other vocabulary terms. Again, you could hit, right here, you could hit pause, write them down, take as much time as you need, and when you're ready, you could go ahead and click play to continue the video. Now, right here, we have more vocabulary terms. And that, my kids, is number four, independent variable. What is the independent variable? Now, the independent variable, that's the input value. That's your x, whatever x is. And if you remember, based on the videos and what we have discussed in past lessons, the x value, that's the x axis. Okay, that's the one that goes horizontally from left to right. That's going to be that pink section right here, going left to right, right to left. That's the independent variable. That's what you could change. Okay, it's not, it's, it's all alone. It's independent. Just think about that. It's an independent number. Okay, but then you have the last vocabulary term, dependent variable. Now, if this is independent, dependent is the output value. That's the Y. That's the one that goes vertically up and down. This one is what you measure. This one, the X axis is independent, but the Y depends on whatever information X gives you. Now, you might be saying, what is Mr. Metal talking about? But no worries, I will be giving you examples. But remember, this y-axis is the dependent. That's what you measure. That's what you calculate. That's like your final result, you could say. And your x, this is what you could change. I am going to show you by using graph paper. So this is our graph paper right here. Remember, as I told you at the beginning of the semester, it was recommended that you by graph paper, and this is going to help you, especially when you get to um, draw a graph. Okay, so I am going to go ahead, and for this example, this is example number one, I am going to go ahead and put input, and that's going to be my x, 
Then I'm going to go ahead and since I have graph paper, I can make straight lines here. And right here, this one, I have my, what do you call this again? If I have my input, you're going to be given something, and that is called my function, and I'm going to put it here. Function rule. Okay? That means you're going to be given that formula. And for this example, they're going to say it's x plus 3. That's the relationship that they have. I go ahead and I go down, and then I put my output. My output, that's going to be y. Okay, now, I am going, for this example, I'm going to go ahead and close my table, because again, this here is called a function table, and I'm going to highlight two important things, and that's going to be everything on my x, which is my input, and I'm going to do that in pink, that way it matches what I gave you for the visual, and then my output, that's my y. Now, what do I mean? If I go ahead and look at this information, everything that's on yellow, it's actually going to be my dependent, my x-axis. Everything on pink is going to be my, I'm sorry, everything on yellow is my y-axis. Everything on pink is my x-axis. Okay? So this is how this is going to work. If you're given an input, you could choose any number. We're going to choose 0, just for this example. Okay, if I say x is 0, I'm going to put, I'm going to use my function rule. Think about this one right here, like a machine. You're going to put a number inside that machine. It's going to calculate everything, and it's going to give you, once it comes out, it's going to give you the answer of what y is. So, if x is 0, I'm going to substitute x by 0, and I'm going to use red just so we could know that 0 is x. And I bring everything else down, plus 3. Okay, so what is 0 plus 3? Well, that's 3. Okay, now, I'm going to go ahead and put my line down here. Again, that's why I love graph paper. Um, I know I cannot make straight lines, but I try my best, especially with graph paper right here. Now, let's use, since remember, this is an independent, you could use any number for x. I'm going to go ahead and say 2, okay? But this one, you can't choose any number because it's y. That's, that's dependent, so it depends on what x is. So, if I know that my function rule is x plus 3, I am going to substitute x by 2 now. So, I'm going to put 2. Then bring everything else down, plus 3. That means it has that relationship of plus 3 for each problem. So what's 2 plus 3? 5. Okay. And then I go ahead and get my lines. That way I know this is my information. And last one, I'm going to choose 4. Since I'm going by 2s, I'll just choose 4. What do I need to do? Yep. I substitute x by 4, so I'm going to put 4 here. Then put my relationship, that means it's plus 3 for each problem. What's 4 plus 3? 4 plus 3 is 7. Okay, I'm not going to stop there, so I'm going to close my table. Okay. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get everything on my y section, so 3, 5, 7, and I'm making this in yellow, then everything on my x, so I have 0, 2, and 4, okay? Now, I am going to graph this, and when I graph, I'm going to go a little bit up, I'm going to go ahead and put my x and my y. Now, with the power of technology, I decided to create this, but I also decided to zoom out a little bit. Now, let's go ahead and identify this. Remember, if we have 
our pink section right here. That's our x-axis. This is our x-axis. And I am going to label this x-axis. And remember, based on what we learned in our notes, x-axis is our independent. Independent, I'm going to write that in. And this here is our input. Think about it as I, I, input. Okay, in, dependent, input. And this would be our output, our Y. Y goes vertically. Okay, so that's going up and down. Okay, and I'm going to label that. And I'm going to say Y axis. And our Y axis is our output. That's the dependent. 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 That is our out. Okay, so this one is more like a round shape if you want to look at it like D and O, output. Okay, now let's go ahead and get our information. Remember, in order to graph based on prior, um, prior lessons that we have had in the class, we need to get our X and our Y. Now, our X and our Y, that means our input and our output. So we're going to get our first set of information. I'm going to go ahead and go like this so I can cover the rest. You have 0 and then you have 30. Okay, so everything on the X is going to be pink. Everything on the Y should be, well that should be yellow, but due to the pen it turns into greenish. So I have my first one again is 0, 3. So I'm going to go ahead and put 0, <clears throat> 3. That's my first set. Okay. Then I get my second set, and that is right here, two, five. So I get two, comma, five. Then my last set, which is three, four. I mean, sorry, four, seven. What is wrong with me? Four, seven. And that's my third set. Okay, that means I'm now going to graph it. So I get x, x is 0, so I'm going to look for 0, that's my origin right here. Then I get 3, so where do they meet? 0, 3, that's my first set. I make my dot, boom, that's the first one. Okay, then I get my second set, which is 2, 5. 2 is on the pink area right here, so all of this is 2. But then I need to know where does it meet with 5. 5 is on the y-axis. What I need to do is keep on going, boom, until they meet. What did you do? Well, remember, if this is 2, I could make my little dots, or you guys could get your crayons, whatever it is, because you want to know where this meets. So this is 2. Then 5 is all of this here from this point. Now, where do they meet? They meet right here. And that's where you have 2, 5. Okay, this is just a little bit of review. But their last set of data is 4, 7. 4 is pink. I get 4, so it's right here. But then you need to find 7. So 4, I'm going to keep on going up, 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 up. It doesn't meet here. You don't put a dot here because you're not talking about another set of data. This is 4. You need 7. 7 is here. 7 on the yellow, which is the x-axis. Keep on going. Where, where do they meet? Oh, right here, Ms. Romero. Awesome. Now, guess what? You have your three sets of data. You now get your ruler. Okay. And here's a funny thing. If you don't have a ruler, you could use a pencil or marker, whatever it is, as long as you're lining it up. Okay. Now, when you line up all your three data, look, these are all the points. If you go like this and you make your straight line, this is not the right graph. You need to be able to connect all the three dots. Once you connect it, you make that line. Guess what? You now graphed. You have everything. You're done. Okay, my kiddos. So this is the information that um, we have done. There is another video. It's a continuation that gives you Another example with a different function rule. Go ahead and take advantage and watch it 
um, as soon as you can. Have a good day and good luck.